Okay, I need you to highlight this fact that insurance is an ongoing cost, meaning it doesn't stop. Like you don't just buy your house, pay for insurance, and never again have to worry about it. Insurance is ongoing. You, you should always have insurance, okay? Um, and there, the first one is called the tenant insurance. Tenant insurance is for uh, policy. It's a policy that protects renters, and it's it's if you lose your contents uh, or personal belongings. Did you know that those are not insured? Like if someone breaks into your apartment and steals your stuff, it's not covered unless you have your own insurance. The landlord has insurance for the building only, the building, not for your stuff, okay? So you gotta watch out for that. You should consider tenant insurance if you're renting as it covers your belongings. Sometimes the belongings, personal belongings, are also known as perils. That's like a legal way to referring to your stuff, okay? Tenant insurance also covers you for potential liability, okay? So you get covered uh, against li liability to surrounding structures. So let's say you fill up your bathtub and something goes wrong with the drain because it has an emergency drain. A bathtub, technically, if you overfill it, there's a little hole in the back that it will just run into the drain and out it goes. But what if it something malfunctions and you overfill your bathtub and it overfills and then somebody under you gets some water in their suite? Like, that is technically your fault. Like, you could be held liable for that. Insurance covers that. And I'm talking about that because that happened to me, right? My, when, our, when my kids were younger, they loved taking a bath, and you don't pay for water at the apartment. I was, so, like, bath time every day, right? And, uh, and that happened. So the tenant came up and said, hey, there's water coming down. It's like, what's going on? And we we're like, I don't know. We didn't do anything. And it was a plumber. A plumber had come in and had done some sort of work and not done it properly. And so there was water leaking into our neighbor underneath us, right? So that could have been, though, uh, we could have been held liable for that if some of their stuff got damaged, right? Tenant insurance, again, is insurance for people renting a house or an apartment. And here is the chart. This is the chart that the province would provide you with. Can you, it's also included in this pink booklet that I gave you? It's right there. If you just flip, flip it open once, it is, it is right there. Okay. Don't bother writing in these because uh, you don't get to have this for the exam. Okay. If, if you need this for the exam, it will be provided. Okay. So here it is. Uh, I, I just want to let you know what to write in here to know how to use it because you might forget by the time it's uh, exam time, you might forget. So here it is. Grab a highlighter. And this is how you work this. You have to have the coverage amount you wish to have insurance for. So they will ask you, like, what, what do you own? Like, do you know kind of what your stuff is all worth if you were to, like, add it all up and obviously you're estimating but you have to pick from this box here you have to pick one number out of this box guaranteed no if ands or buts right so I will say you must pick okay you must pick one value from the orange, right? So if you're, if you're wondering like where, like the orange, anywhere in here, you have to pick one value from there, okay? There's no way around that. And then I will use a different color and just say that any, so basically, okay, I'll tell you this. If you want coverage for 40 grand and you have a choice, you want standard or do you want comprehensive? Standard, the name says it all. Standard is very basic coverage. Comprehensive, it's a bit more 
uh, broad, like it covers more things than just a standard. So obviously, if it's 40 grand and you want a standard policy, it'll be 212. If you want a comprehensive policy, it'll be 269, right? So those are your choices, but you pick one of them. All of these prices, folks, you're listening carefully to this part, right? All of these are assuming that you want a $500 deductible. What does that mean? I will give you a little arrow there. You pay 500 bucks when making a claim. You pay $500 when you make a claim. That's just So this is what you pay every year. Okay, so if you want 40,000, if your stuff is worth 40 grand and you want a standard policy, you would pay $212 a year. Okay, every year. Let's say somebody breaks into your place and they steal a whole bunch of stuff. You want to make a claim. They'll say, sure, no problem, but you have to pay us 500 bucks. And then anything over that, we will cover. So if they come and rob your place and it's worth 40 grand your stuff, of course, you're not even going to think about it. You're going to be like, yeah, I want to make a claim because 500 bucks is nothing. But let's say somebody breaks into your place and they smash a very expensive vase or something, right? And the vase is like 100 bucks. Are you going to make a claim? I wouldn't because you're going to have to pay 500 bucks for something that's worth 100. So this is kind of like to prevent you from just claiming anything, right? They want, it has to be substantial. Next, this is what I need you to understand, okay? This chart goes all the way to $75,000. If your stuff is worth more than $75,000, you should come and talk to me because I want to know what you're doing, that you're doing so well. But then uh, for each additional $1,000 of coverage, you'd have to pay an additional 450 a year on top of the 359. Okay? So I will highlight this last row like this. And I will call this this is a word I made up. Over itch, overage. Like how much you're over by. Yeah? So this is maybe this will be a maybe. You may never need this, but if you go past this, you do. So I'll just say this. Go on arrow to 75,000. Just say this is max. This is the max as of the chart. But don't you worry, sir or miss, right? We will get you extra coverage. You just have to pay more. And the answer is 450 for every $1,000 extra you want. So if your stuff is worth 76,000, just follow me here. If your stuff is worth 76,000, you know what you're going to pay that year? 359 plus 450. That covers you 76,000. 77,000, you'd pay $9 more plus the 359. So you always have to add this to the latest number that you get from this chart. Last but not least, I'm going to use a different color for this one. If you don't want a $500 deductible, you want a lower deductible, which is 200. Those are your only two options. You must just add 10% to your premium. That's it. Okay. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything we've got so far by 1.10. That adds 10% to our premium. And this is the last thing here. Insurance is not taxed anymore. It was. So I tried to get rid of all the taxing questions. But if I ever ask you for taxes, you can say, Mr. Erickson, uh, we don't pay taxes on insurance anymore. Right? You just write that down and you let me have it. Right? Okay. That's, so this is the introduction to insurance. We're going to use this table heavily, okay? And sometimes you're going to be within this. Sometimes you're going to go past your $75,000 coverage. So you're going to watch out. This is tenant insurance for renting, people renting, okay? 
So let's go over here. And this is a scary formula. I'm not going to lie to you. But students kept on asking, can I have a formula? Can I have a formula? Please, 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 can I have a formula? And I said, okay, here, fine. This is what you're getting, okay? So it's kind of scary, but I will break it down for you. So insurance is, these square brackets means you have to do everything inside of this before you consider timesing it by 1.10. That's only if you would want a $200 deductible. So this may not even be a, a case, okay? And uh, you do table rate plus overage cost per thousand bucks. What is this? It's either 450 or 550 in this case. That's it. But that's only if you are indeed going over 75,000. Okay. Um, can I put an arrow here? Overage is amount over 75K. Sorry, 75K. In this case, for renting, 75K is the maximum uh, that you, you will get. Okay? Insurance is not taxed. One more time. And you see this here? I need to, If you copy this to your study sheet, it has to be done exactly this way. We do this part first. If this is going to be there, we do this first, then we add this to it. Okay? So I know it's scary, but let's break it down. Let's do one example right here. Joan rents, so that's important, folks. It's rents an apartment. You're renting, you're not owning. And you wish to buy, wishes to buy 65,000 worth of coverage. And it's standard form, that's also important to us, with a $500 deductible. What is her annual insurance premium? Okay. So we're going to use this scary formula. We're going to write it down real quick. Table rate plus overage times uh, dollars per thousand over a thousand. All of that times 1.10. And let's plug in as we go. Insurance. Table rate. This is the one I told you. I used orange in my box. You have to pick one value from here. So we need to match 65,000. That's right there. And, and you have to either pick between standard and comprehensive. And the question does say standard. So you pick the 315, write it down. I'm going to use 315 like that. Are we going over in this case? Are we going over our 75,000? I let you write this down first and I'm going to go back to the table. The answer is we're not going over the 75,000, right? We're not. So I'm going to go ahead and just get say, well, this doesn't apply, okay? We are not over 75K. So you get to safely discard that part of the, the formula. And then you just close the square bracket because it's still there. Do I need to bother with the 1.10? We don't. Because, let's go back to our table, that part would only apply if you wanted a $200 deductible. What do we want in this case? A $500 deductible. So it stays as is. Okay. So we go back to our scary looking formula and we just say, right, we have a $500 deductible, therefore omit. Okay. We just don't worry about that part. So, Mr. Dirksen, are you telling me that the answer is 315? That's exactly what I'm uh, telling you. This is per year. Annual, right? Per year. 
yearly. All of them mean the same thing. Uh, folks, tenant insurance is not that expensive. It's not. Um, so I, I remember it being like 20 to 30 bucks a month. No, but, but that was like a long time ago. They should have been checking. That's, a, that's true. But I, I don't think it went up that much because your stuff is about the same. It's not like, it's not like the house prices go up like crazy. That's where insurance goes up like crazy. Yeah. It's always 75 for renting. Once we own, you're gonna see it's 200,000. I don't know if we're gonna get to house insurance today. I think I'm just gonna stick with rent. Let's see. You're a pretty bright group. Maybe I'll get to the buying. So this is this is how the scary formula just comes down to this, right? So it works with every case if you're careful. So let's do another one. I wonder if I should let you try this already. I'll do it with you. I'll do one more example. Uh, Dimitri is currently renting. There you go. It could be renting a house, renting an apartment. doesn't matter. If you rent, you're tenant, okay? Instead of lieutenant, you're just a tenant, right? But you're getting there. Uh, I would like to purchase insurance to cover the contents of his apartment. He estimates that he's about... He has about $90,000 worth of belongings. Wow, that's pretty impressive. He would like to purchase comprehensive insurance. Okay, so you want comprehensive insurance with a $200 deductible. How does this work? We're over, right? So we're gonna say this, insurance. We have lots of space, so we're gonna go table plus Dollars over a thousand. Oh, sorry. Over a check. Times dollars over a thousand. I use the square brackets to kind of just differentiate between the round. Okay. Times one point ten. So this is on your study sheet. I'll tell you uh, already a secret. This formula is exactly the same for home insurance. It's just it's a different table that we're gonna use. So th here we go. You must have a table. This, this has to be there. So let's go and get it. Let's go look at our table. And here's where it gets a little tricky. We are, we are maxing out, right? 90,000 gets past the 75. But you still have to pick from the orange region. You got it? So we want, what do we want? Standard or comprehensive? Comprehensive. So you have to write down the 454. Let's go and do that. 454 is a must. So, and then we go, are we over? Yeah, so this is where it gets a little, this is how I do it. Overage, I do that on the side here. I go 90,000 minus 75. 75 because that's the max I'll put the max on the side here okay so 90,000 minus 75,000 that means that you're fifteen thousand dollars over what does that mean you need to purchase additional coverage that's what what you need to do there I will kind of underline this number and we're going to bring that over here. You're going to go 15,000 over times some sort of dollar amount over a thousand. This dollar amount is right underneath the 454. Okay? So you go to 454. So it's it's 550. Yeah, it's hard to see but it's 550. So you put this number down as well. I got it from my table, so I'm just gonna go 550, like that. Do I need to keep the 110 there? And the answer is yes, because of this, 
you want to keep that 110 as part of your formula. If it had said, I want the $500 deductible, you would have omitted this step because you don't need this. Okay. And now it's just a matter of, do you know how to use your calculator? Do this first. Do first. Okay. Don't be plugging in the whole thing because you're going to get an error. I can tell you that already. So you're going to go 550 divided by 1,000. It's probably smart to do this little bracket here. Then you multiply that by 15,000. So you need to pay an extra 8250 to cover the additional 15,000. So I'm going to go like this and say that all of this just reduces to that. This stays at 454. And we slowly clean this mess up, right? So I have 8250 on my calculator. I'll just go plus 454. And so that would be 536.50. Technically, inside the square brackets, it just comes to this now. And we have to add 10% to this. The 536.50, folks, this inside the square brackets, that would have been a $500 deductible policy right there. But I want a $200 deductible, so I need to add 10%. You actually end up paying more a year if you want a lower deductible. It's just the way it works. So here we go. 590, 15 is your final yearly, yearly premium. So if you hear the word premium is like your fee your yearly cost for insurance, it all means the same thing. So was this a little trickier? Yeah. A little bit. yeah. So can I just, I don't know, I, I always try to make this a little bit easier as you look at it. To be honest, this part here covers the first 75 grand. You have to understand that. This covers the first 75 and then the next, the 15,000 you're over, you pay 550 for every thousand dollars. So you figure that out. How much extra do I need to purchase? Yes, go ahead. And then add times 1.10, 590, 15, okay? Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a bit. I'm gonna ask you to try, I'm gonna skip a few pages here because I talk about homeowner's insurance here. I'm going to skip, skip, skip. Go to page 47. Just going to ask you to try page 47 and see how that goes. I'll be honest with you right now. Just listen one second here. If you plug in... If you plug in a bunch of numbers right now and you get the complete wrong answer, I'm okay with that right now. Just try it. Try something, and then when I go over it, you'll be like, oh, okay, I can't. Okay, got it, right? So just try it, and then uh, I'll take it back in a bit. I will do home insurance after this. Okay, okay so here we go. Um, 47. What's the annual cost to insure an apartment for $65,000 under comprehensive with a $200 deductible? And you know what? It's probably a good idea to just figure to do this one. Table, right? Over, there's a dollar per thousand that you pay, and all of that is multiplied by 1.10. And so you need to grab something from the table, right? So we're doing tenant. It's it's an apartment, right? So we're tenant insurance territory for sixty-five thousand. Okay. So I grab this. Sixty-five is right there. Is it standard or comprehensive? Comprehensive. So we we grab the four hundred. Okay. So that's your first entry. Are we over? We're not. We're not over seventy-five thousand. So don't worry about that. 
Do I need to worry about the 1.10? You actually do. Because it's a $200 deductible that we want that. So in this case, it's just 440. That's it. That's how much you pay per year. Okay. If you don't like the formula, you can figure out your own way of doing it. That's I'm totally fine. The formula I just made that one up. Uh, totally fine. Okay. Here we're insuring an apartment again for eighty thousand. We are over. Okay, we are over the seventy-five k. Standard, two hundred dollar deductible. So I'm just gonna figure out insurance. Let's go get our table rate. We are at standard and we are renting. So we do max out, 75 is the max, which we pay 359 a year for. Write that number down. Plus, how much are we over by? It's fairly simple now, it's, you were over by 5,000. So you can just go $5,000. And how much you need to pay extra for every thousand? In this case, it would be 450, okay? So this would be 450. Make sure you put that square bracket there because you're gonna first do all of this before you bother with the 1.10. Let's clean that up. You go five, oh, sorry, 450 divided by 1,000 is that times 5,000, 2250 extra. That's not a whole lot more that you're paying extra for that additional coverage. But just write it down. Don't, I think what I see a lot is just like, boom, here's the final number, Mr. Dirksen. I'm like, well, what happened in between? Like, if you get the wrong number, there's not much I can do. Sorry, this is 22, right? So now you add these up. So I go 2250, which is already on my screen. I add the 359 to it. Okay, so this is 381.50, and now I just go ahead and multiply it by 1.10. So that's 419.65 for the year. This, these are all yearly amounts. If I ever were to ask you for the monthly, you just divide this by 12. Um, let's do that monthly payment because I do that I actually do mine per month but the policy always comes per year so we just go 419 65 divided by 12 it doesn't happen very often but I do remember one year the province did that so let's just be prepared so that'd be $34.97 per month that you would be paying uh, in this case. To be 100% honest with you, they probably add a bit more for interest. They would charge you a little bit of interest for financing it, but you get the picture, right? We don't talk about that in this course. One more. Insure the apartment. 120. That's a lot. We're over for sure. Comprehensive and $500 deductible. When you see the 500, you, that really tells you get rid of the 1.10, okay? So insurance, let's go get a table. We need the insurance for tenant. So we're for sure maxing, we're comprehensive, right? So we're in this column, we're maxing out at 454 and we pay 550 extra. So 454 plus, how much are we over by? I will do that on the side here. $45,000, right? So that 45, I'm gonna plug in here. And I pay 550 for every $1,000 that I'm over. This part is gone. I, I will just write it down like this and just go, we don't need that. We are not going for a $200 deductible. We're staying like that. So then it's 454 
plus, let's clean this up, 550 divided by 1,000 times 45,000. So now it's more, right? Now it's 247.50. Uh, do we need the square brackets? We don't need them anymore because we're not multiplying by 1.10. So I'm just going to add these up. 701.50. Okay. Dollar sign. 701. You can't leave it like that. You want to make sure you put the zero there. So that's 701.50 per year. So I could have easily asked you, hey, what's a $200 deductible policy? All you would have to do is multiply this by 1.10. And boom, you've got it, right? So the 10% addition, you only do that at the very end, if applicable. In this case, it's a $500 deductible, so we don't make any changes to what we to the math we're, we're doing. Okay. Don't be adding 10% just to this or just to that, right? Then it'll be wrong. You just do that at the very end. Okay. Let's talk about house insurance. It's the same idea. It's going to be a little different. I'll ask you to do work on this, a bit more work on this tomorrow, right? That's what I want to cover. So go to 43. You're going to realize that home insurance is a lot more expensive. Okay? Why would you think it is more expensive? Anyone? Is it just your stuff that you're covering? You're covering the entire building. If there's a fire, right? Boom, your stuff is gone and your building is damaged. If you owe money on that, you think the bank is gonna be like, nah, you don't need to pay us anymore because you had a fire. We feel sorry for you. They're still gonna be like, hey, you gotta pay us our money, right? So insurance covers the rebuilding of your house. It will even cover for relocating you. If you need to stay at a hotel or rent a place, they'll pay for that as well while they're rebuilding your house. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, you could be out of your house for over a year. It depends on how long it takes for them to like redo it. Sometimes they got your place and just redo, they use the structure and rebuild it from the inside. And the roof, obviously, most of the time the roof is gone. But sometimes they just like demolish the whole thing and just start from scratch. So it depends on how long it takes to redo it, okay? So homeowner's insurance, it's, it's gonna uh, protect you from fire, burglary, flood and storm damage, all of those things are covered. Um, it covers the, your stuff, the building, and any liability that you may cause to your neighbor. Let's say your fence, gets blown over by the wind and your neighbor has like a nice quad parked right next to the fence and it falls on it and breaks it. That's a liability. That's something that you would have to pay, but your insurance would take care of that. The damage you cause to others. Or you swing a baseball. You hear clear like the, the smashing. Then it's on you and your insurance would most likely cover that. House insurance, insurance for people owning a house or condominium. Covers the contents of the home and the building itself. This is important. Lending institutions, those are banks, will not release a mortgage until proof of insurance is given. I had to go get insurance done before they would give me a mortgage. I'm going to go a bit more detail uh, later on, but some of the factors that affect your insurance, right? You need to have a few of these is where you live, what type of coverage, obviously, is it standard, is it comprehensive? The value of your home, is it a million dollar home? Is it a two million? Is it a $200,000 home? That is obviously going to factor in, right? Because it's going to cost them according to the value. Uh, any additional coverage you want. So do you want like extra flood coverage, uh, groundwater coverage, or sewer backup? That's the nasty one. That when sewer literally floods into your basin. 
somebody else's poop goes into your basement. To put it like bluntly, uh, there is coverage for that. Also, the deductible, like what kind of deductible are you choosing? Okay, that those are all things that uh, apply to it. Code of forty-four. Discounts. You, if you qualify for discounts, folks, you go for it. Um, for example, I have like, I think I have like a fifteen-year claim-free history, so I never made a claim in fifteen years. Did something happen to my house? Did I claim it? I just did it myself. Right? I fixed it myself because I didn't want that on my history. Because your premiums go up if you make a claim. Smoke-free home. Right? If nobody smokes, like they ask you, it's like anybody home smoke, it's free, it's, you get a bit of a cheaper insurance if nobody smokes, right? Do you have an alarm system? Usually you get 10% discount if you have an alarm system. And it's 15% discount if it's actually monitored, meaning if the alarm goes off, will a company be notified? So up to 15%, 15% off. Hey. Wouldn't you take that if your insurance is $1,000? You get $150 off. And 1,000 is actually cheap. I pay like 1,500 a year, okay? So hey, that's a pretty cool uh, deal. The building itself, right? Uh, how old is it? What's the age of it? Is it a bungalow? Is it a two-story? Is it a side-by-side? -side? Is it a multifamily, single family, right? Like all those things. Just be prepared to answer a whack load of questions when you get it for the first time, okay? They will ask you a lot of stuff. Is the garage, is it attached to the house? Is it detached? Yeah, it makes a difference. If it's attached, it's going to be more, okay? Um, what type of electrical wiring has been install installed? Aluminum wiring is bad. Okay, back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, they used aluminum wiring. And it is the cause of a lot of fires, okay? Um, you wanna inspect that. You wanna, before you buy a house and it's older, you want someone for sure, a home inspector, to check that. Because if the insurance company finds out, they may not even give you insurance. They may say, no, until you replace the wiring, no insurance. And that's thousands of dollars to rewire a home. You may be able to negotiate with the owner, right? Hey, I have to redo the wiring. Give me $20,000 off your price. And now we're talking, right? Or something like that. Maybe you can't. Maybe you'd be like, either you take it or you don't. It's on you to replace it. But anyways, aluminum wiring is bad, okay? Here is your table. You ready for this? We're probably going to run out of time to actually do the math, but I will explain it, okay? Please follow here. You must pick a number from this area. Pick one, okay? I'll say pick one. Okay, that means that they have to give you enough information to actually be able to pick one. It looks scary, doesn't it? Look at the top here. It's either Winnipeg or Metro Winnipeg, it doesn't matter. Area two, area three, area four. So if it's Winnipeg, you have the choice between standard comprehensive. If it's area two, you have the choice between standard and comprehensive, right? So every area, I will tell you that, the question will tell you this, you just have to pick between standard and comprehensive and obviously, I'm going to have to give you the coverage amount. What's the max for a house here? The max is 200000 See that down here? That's the max. If you want extra, just like before, but there's way more numbers to choose from. But remember... If you're down that column and you pick a, uh, and you pick 692, you're just gonna grab that bottom number to continue figuring out the extra coverage needed. All of these prices are for a 500 to do, uh, 500 
dollar deductible policy, just like before. If you want that $200 deductible, what are you going to do? It says it right here. Honestly, even if you don't have the formula, you should be able to catch it right there. I would really want to do one example, but I'm just going to hold on, on that for now. Um, thank you, guys.